Ugh, all right. Hopefully that's live. I'm mainly dealing with a new setup here. Uh, I just switched over from OBS Classic to OBS Studio and, you know, moving pangs. Hopefully the stream key is going to be working just as fine as it used to. Uh, I don't have uh, as much feedback as I did originally. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're getting some people. Nice, hello, yeah. Uh, can everyone see the stream just fine? Yeah, unfortunately, Sly09 isn't here with me. Um, he is stuck in a wireless hell of someone else's own imagining, and as such, his Skype calls just could not work out. Sound levels are good? Well, that's just perfect. How about visual levels? Are visual levels good? Can you see anything but black? I know there's a lot of black in the stream, but um, hopefully there's things other than black. Video looks good. Excellent. Okay, so... I guess we're ready, then. Hey, guys. This is V Prisoner, and welcome to another episode of Final Fantasy Record Keeper. Tonight we got the uh, FF4 event on tap. So, I'm gonna level with you. I uh, made a last minute shift. Yeah, as you can see, like, I also uh, HDified the stream now, and so I'm just sort of messing with a whole bunch of new stuff, and I re jiggered blue stacks so that the resolution is much sharper. Sprites are all nice and clean. Um, so anyway, I made a last minute adjustment to my team because uh, you can see Golbez is in there. That would be because I uh, I kind of dollar pulled his cloak off this uh, first banner, so well, that changed everything. Let's take one quick look at it. It's very, you know, it's standard, but great. Is what I would say. Okay, so Golbez is cloak. Six magic attacks, AoE, and in, in dark. And that's mighty fine. So Golbez is actually kind of an interesting sort of mage, because he's not necessarily built for DPS like most other mages. In fact, he's supposed to mix, um, instead of mixing white and black like, say, a sage would, instead he mixes uh, black and defense. He has five and knight, but knight is not there to do damage. He's there, it's there mostly to, so he can make use of its aggro abilities. So it's very strange. He's like this very uh, tanky sentinel mage. It's very odd. And also his, uh, I guess we can take a look at banner one real quick because his burst soul break reflects this. Now of course we got Paladin Cecil's OSB, but uh, there we are. <clears throat> Somebody's car alarm is off. So anyway, we got, uh, Twin Moon. Instead of giving him Imperil Dark or In Dark or any of that other DPS horse shit, it gives him Sentinel. It attracts all single target physical and magical attacks to him. It's also the second BSB to have, uh, what's called Summon Strike, which is a status condition that we saw on, uh, Yuna's BSB for, from the FF10 event. It's a thing that they're just sort of doing now, like the first command gives you summon strike, and it's supposed to be a an effect that enhances the second burst command. Because you, as you can see, if you have summon strike, it also heals you. So yeah, it's a pretty decent, uh, it's a pretty decent BSB, and it also plays well into his whole sentinel gimmick. As a result, Gobez doesn't do as much damage as a standard darkness black mage would, but he's still pretty great. Anyway, I guess we can move on to the event. <clears throat> so, what we got here is, uh, champion fights. Luge and Balnabber. I've been calling him Balnabber since day one, and, uh, <laughs> well, one thing led to another. That's localization, folks. Luge and Barnabal... <laughs> Barnabas, Bart, whatever. It started apart. And once you destroy Balnabus, then Luge gets on top of him and 
forms Barnabas Z, and eventually you fight Luge Borg as the second fight. That's how it is with this initial uh, champion fight. There's always just two fights, one after the other. Anyway, uh, I've just got my uh, standard champion wasting team. Usually, you don't see a lot of um, you don't see a lot of leeway from the initial team until we start getting to the ultimate fights, where I have to specify a little bit more. So uh, yeah, this will probably do it. And such, yes. Um, I was just making sure Rydia has Chain Thundaga on there. It's very nice. And so now I believe we want a Vessel of Fate, if I can find it. <laughs> if I can find that thing that only takes about 30% of my entire follower roster. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Slyod is honestly odd that this is a champion fight, because we, we get this as an ultimate immediately after, so... <laughs> I think the only thing that kind of bugs me is that sometimes when I want to use pieces of equipment with shared soul breaks, those can get in the way because they automatically equip on you when you equip that item. So you just kind of have to remember if you are not planning on using the soul break that comes with them to take them off if they're going to be in your way. I'm also going to spruce up the frame rate by uh, giving, uh, giving the effects like uh, a gig of memory to play with. I mean, originally it had 700, so it's not like a crippling step up. It's just a logical one. It's well known that Vessel of Fate is extremely my shit. Why I hit why I hit Swift Spell on that one. Um, these fights can get out of hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do have an animation for Barnabas Z, and it's great. Honestly, I love a lot of the boss animations of this game. They, um, originally at least, they had really, like, awkward quap-ass shit. But now, the sprites move much more organically. There's lots of little detail put into the tweening of, uh, different bits and pieces of the sprite to make it look like it's moving more naturally. I mean, you could probably see Dr. Luge just kind of fidgeting up there while he was moving the levers and shit, and, you know, yeah, attention to detail. It's great. And it is also a learning process. Greatly appreciated. Up. 
And bear in mind, this is roughly a 20% chance of him countering with that, so... I mean, seriously, I'm not about to lose my lunch at the first fight. Multi break. <laughs> Sometimes it's great to just be able to toot your own horn, you know? This is your dream situation. To get good enough at the game to where these fights that you would claw through by tooth and nail in any other circumstance are just absolutely trivial. that I didn't smack the thunder weakness yet. Uh -oh. Yeah, let's finish this off right. Honestly, Refia's is one of my favorite BSPs in the entire game, just because it's... I mean, Refia already is... Besides just being a monk, and a ranged monk at that... Uh, yeah, there we go. Forgot to use Chain Thundog at the end there. Besides being a ranged monk, she is also just this gigantic pile of self-sufficiency. She's able to buff herself like crazy. There's a ton of different ways that she can utilize that, and even, even her default Soul Break is a uh, 30% mag 30% attack and critical hit rate with haste. It's kind of absurd. She's able to take her care of herself really well as a result of it. Yeah, and there they are as ultimates. Yeah, it is. Anyway, white dragon. Okay, so I learned something recently, and by recently I mean roughly an hour or so ago from uh, Wondering Newbie's stream. Uh, White Dragon and his ilk, a lot of Final Fantasy IV bosses actually, came out before Bio was uh, Poison Elemental. It used to be non-elemental, and as such, the White Dragon's gimmick is sort of downplayed by having a glaring hole in the form of no poison resistance. That being said, I have no intention of respecting someone who will not respect me. So, uh... He's in for a beatdown. Let me get Bioga, and Shane Biora is right over here. It's one of those rare circumstances where even Meltdown can't help because all three of those elements are resisted or absorbed. Fortunately, the thing that he doesn't, uh, res like, he only resists Earth, so Meteor Crush is safe. As for Gold, as Memento Mori, he's just kind of an iffy affair, and frankly, it's just, you know, he's kind of just going to be sitting in the back there. It's really sad. Oh, well. At least he can pal it up with his good friend the Onion. I'll probably just let him squeeze off on Memento Mori just to get his buff up. Yeah, uh, Golbez is in Dark 
SB is called Genesis Rock, and I'm sure it's like that sort of thing. Yeah, on top of all this dumb garbage, you also have to, like, take him out quickly. Now, granted, he doesn't have a whole lot of health, but at the same time... I'm very iffy toward these fights that uh, have lots of elemental resistance up their sleeves, just because in recent months, FFRK has really taken a major swing towards elemental meta. Which is to say, they really love their elemental damage. Lots of it. So when you encounter a boss that has a ton of elemental resistances as just a matter of course, it gets really awkward. Not so fine. Counter slow is really debilitating in a game that focuses so much on the use of haste. I think I'll wait on Penella to get her thing up because I really need to use multi break at some point. I hear you on that one. Oh, Kill It Fast also uses Counter Slam. The FF4 bosses are definitely a relic of um, an earlier time in the game where Dana didn't really know what the hell they were doing yet. Yeah, like I said, it's a learning process. Also, shoutouts to Refia for keeping the anime action lines going. It's a real sense of style. Yeah, the thing about Poison and Sap is that it barely does anything in this game. It's just kind of there, so they keep doing that. I should keep doing this. Ogopogo. Uh, this guy was at the very end of uh, the FF4 dungeon, wherein he was guarding the Masamune, like two rooms before Zeromas showed up. So, um... Alright. Loves his counters. Uh, he resists element... <laughs> yeah, I think. These stupid gimmicks, I'm telling you. This is basically why the FF4 bosses have not really aged that well in this brave new world of elemental meta we got going on here. He also counterattacks even... Uh, yeah, he counterattacks when you hit his weakness. So... Well, I say weakness. It's technically a weakness since he's taking full damage as a ratio of half. But fortunately, he's open to slow, so I uh, probably should set that up real quick. You have Black Four and Summon. What am I doing with you? Um, this is what I want. Yep. There we go. And 
I think it's basically okay to give up Wrath right now, just because I need a... Uh... Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the biggest thing is that Regin just totally nullifies it. <laughs> I'm still remembering that fight that we had with, uh, with Beatrix and Steiner, where we were able to counter their, like, sap-go-to-one combo with, uh, Freya's default soul break. That was great. That was one of the crowning moments. Because I'm a champion of Freya, and I don't care how badly the game shits on her. I swear, we're gonna spruce it up a little bit. I know that it's all been Vessel of Fate up till now, but, um... <laughs> that's the world we live in at this point. And hopefully, Golbez will be able to use his, uh, SSB at some point during the fight. Yeah, it was super cool, because I love... If there's anything that Slyo and I love, it's stupid plans. We come from a background where stupid plans are adored. But anyway, the thing to note is he always opens with those two tidal waves, so... No, that wasn't a goop. That wasn't, like, massive speed or anything. That was just annoyance. Soon comes before slow. The thing to note, too, is that um, Swift Spell normally doesn't do as much damage as it has been doing in these fights because it's just sort of. It's kind of toned down to make up for the fact that it is instant cast. Anyway, um, this is also due to the fact that these guys tend to have slightly less, slightly fewer stats than normal bosses of their ilk, because elemental resistances are already a very annoying. Oh God! Oh, well, good thing that did shit all. This is getting me a problem, um, namely because Pinello, I feel, is being forced to be too much of a workhorse. She has uh, White 5 and Dancer 5, and that's really all she needs. He's very much a Swiss Army Knight for debuffs and healing and all that stuff. It's a very excellent combo to have. But it comes with a side effect of, uh, of being like, oh, I gotta throw on this buff, I gotta debuff first, and then meanwhile I'm getting my shit pushed in because I don't have a distance up. Which means I can't, like, keep up with my group heals. Oh, good, we get to do this. As long as Golbez gets to play us off. Yeah, this ought to do it. Or would do it if he didn't resist.
No respect for calling him. So it's off to the ultimate bosses. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and ask since it's on the top of my head. Um, Slyo, uh, do you think that you'll be up for multiplayer? Assuming that your phone internet is like you can just 4G it up or something. I don't know the state of your phone. Yeah, it is really strange that the fight would start at champion and then proceed to ultimate We do it again.
Ah, I wasn't saying anything because I was quiet. I was on safari. Definitely not because I had my mic turned off. What I was trying to say is Sid Rain's BSP is like absolutely amazing in the hands of Darkness Caster. Because all a Darkness Caster needs to do is provide Memento Mori and maybe an in dark or so. Sid Rain's can cover the rest. I mean honestly in my mind, I'd much prefer not to have Sid Rain's as a native person just because he functions so incredibly well on any darkness mage as a roaming warrior. That's one of the major strengths of Sobrain's BSB is that it's just so incredibly self-sufficient. Like I said, if it does turn out to be, like, it's out, it's almost definitely on the internet. It does this at times. And it's the main reason why I've been locked behind 540p for so long. And then I want to branch out and I get smacked in the face. All my frames, just gone in an instant. I would go ahead and use Golbez's uh, Genesis Rock, except for the fact that that doesn't do anything to holy damage, and that's really my moneymaker right here. If anyone cares, the football team just finished throwing the sports ball into the goalposts. I think my favorite football team is the one that throws the sports ball the most and gets the largest amount of points. All in all, I think it's going to be a very interesting season. <laughs> and yet you're all here with me. The hell are y'all doing with your life? In all honesty, I do appreciate it, though. Okay, so we have the last dude. Who is... Dark Bahamut. This one confused me for the longest time, just because uh, he's... Well, he's resistant to everything but poison. And I'm like, well, where's poison on the banner? And then I learned about the whole 
poison not being an element until after these bosses were introduced thing. To say nothing of the fact that Dark Bahamut is the one that guards Ragnarok, which is the OSB that's on tap, so yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I've got this football and Kaz is streaming Bloodborne. Uh, that's one hell of a multitask setup you got. Anyway, um, what we have here is the usual. Except, uh, he doesn't open with Mega Flare and just instantly smack you for 5,000 damage or something. So that's nice. He's mostly very toned down since he doesn't really, like, since he has all of that resistance garbage, he, I guess they compensated by giving him significantly lower stats, like ultimate plus style stats. So if he had a weakness, he would be taking about as much damage as Dark Knight Cecil just did. So that helps. Alright, so we got another setup here. We're gonna save the queen. Are we gonna save the queen, you may ask? Also... <sighs> Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that Rydia can do about that. Um... What else, what else, what else? Um... Hmm. You know what? Maybe Dispel. Because what I was uh, parsing around for is... Namely that Dark Bahamut can cast Reflect on himself, and he counters physical attacks with Flare bounced off himself. That's how it does. Anyway, uh, let's see if we can hunt down a specific Bursal Break, and if not, then we can just, like, go for Vessel of Fate. I followed this one recently, so she should be around here somewhere. Like I said, it's not the end of the world if we don't find it, it's just, uh, like, Swift Spell is going to be doing a lot more damage than it has any right to if it comes to Vessel of Fate, but I would like to diversify. Fortunately, now that I've said that out loud... Oops, oops, oops. I... Don't think it's gonna happen. All right, fine. Fuck it. Lame. Let's be lame as heck, all of us. You also notice that Inazuma 11 got uh, pushed back quite a bit because it's no longer than the new hotness. Now it's Yokai Watch, and before then it was just like, yeah, that, that's generally what they do. Sad, sad, sad dealings. Ah, hello. Welcome to the stream. Glad you can make it.
Do not adjust your television sets. <laughs> okay, I ran the numbers on this one just mainly based off of, uh, This ought to be fine. Anyway, I had to bring the spell because Bridie has a lot of poison gear kitted out and she would have a problem otherwise. Meanwhile, I'm not doing all the damage that I would like to. Oh good, that can get reflected. Cool to know. even through resistance, so we've officially stopped care. The other thing I learned recently is that uh, Swiss Bell is tagged as Celerity. For whatever reason, Larry is a physical skill set. But uh, don't tell Swift though. Okay, so I'll just do this. Then I'll do Vessel of Fate and all that crap. I guess the big issue here is that I'm kitted out much more for uh, much more for defense than I am for offense. Oh, right on cue. Fortunately, Mortal Cry has non-elemental chasers, so I don't care about losing damage in the slot. Thanks for the magic, Blink, you dumb idiot. Uh, yeah, he does get a uh, summon shadow dragon thingo. Unfortunately, it's hold. It's super shitty. A lot of default soul breaks are shitty. With the exception of a few, like, uh, Celestis, for instance, cast Shelga. That's really good as far as those sorts of things go.
why I'm bothering with this. I have plenty of damage in the pocket now. Do you... So I'll see if I can't put a Memento Mori back up. Well, that's kind of disgusting. Just a desperate bid to try and clinch it before we're done. Or, when I say done, I mean build it. Let's see what that does to- oh. It's not too bad. It definitely is like busy work. Usually, it, like, I had an A game set up, but unfortunately I couldn't find the correct BSP for that, so I just kind of had to uh, readjust. That being said, maybe Golbez can just hold on until Rydia is finished with her shit. he goes. <sighs> if 
five more seconds, I could have clinched it. Oh well. Now at this point, um, he stopped caring. And now he's just going to cast Reflare, Reflect Flares like he doesn't even care. What is going on with this fight? How did I lose this? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty sad. And that is probably the first time I have ended on a loss in quite a while. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna try that one again just because it's like, um, that fight already drug on for a while, and I was wait this much, a tiny pixel away from clenching it, and then all of my damage just disappeared. Kaput. But, sometimes that's just how it is. And I'd rather not put you guys in a position to have to make, you have to sit through all that crap again, so I will do that on my own time. It's sad, I know. Oh, the Patriots can fucking pull out a clutch, but I can't. Ugh. Sick and disgusting. Anyway, I think that'll do it for tonight. Uh, thank you all for joining me for, like, fucking 14,000 frames. I'm gonna have to have a talk with my internet. Not with my internet provider. That won't help. Just my internet. If need be, I have other ways of uh, getting it right up, but unfortunately that's how it is for now. It's a learning process, like I said, so hopefully we'll have a much better situation from here on in. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. Oh, Dark Bahamut was the Patriots. I don't play football. I don't watch football. I don't know football, and I'm not a football. I don't want to be a football when I grow up. Well, okay then. At least the setup is nice. I can definitely use this going into the uh, going into the next season. So next time we've got FF1 in the pocket. Yeah, FF1. It's been a while, but yeah, we finally have an event for FF1 after quite some time. When was the last FF1 event? Oh yeah, it was the fucking Et Mobius crossover event where they had to steal characters from that game just to flesh out FF1's roster because goddamn. Well, okay then. Um, I will go ahead and see you later. Yeah, take care. Good night.